Hello guys, Robert and I are here. We're back. To talk about... From Worlds. An incredibly important thing uh, that has just happened. It's the first chapter pack for second edition El Game primero. of Thrones. The first. The very first one. So We, we are taking see, the black. We've taken it. We're putting rubber to the road. We're actually going to see... Have they pulled it off? Have they? We see some new cards. Core set, sure, you work on it for a while. You release cards. it. Everything's cool. But what about the cards? This is the first rotating content we're going to see. Ever. That's so true. So this is, this is ephemeral. That's so Not true. Not really. And, I mean, it's here for years. And we're at that awesome but, stage of the game you know. where every pack is like changing things dramatically. And it's like, oh man, one card and now Martell is yes. a power. So, so what? How many powers. unique cards were there in the core box? Hundreds? Uh, a bunch. Of some kind? Almost So this millions. is 20 new cards. Two for every house at least. Pretty significant. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, all right. Uh, Let's and jump in. Dude, but before we jump in, this, no you joke. guys have to know, it's we're, we're trying to be better about this. This kind of content, the unboxing, and, and pretty much everything that we're doing uh, is made possible by you by buying from us online. So that's awesome. And by the generous Thank you for all of the Game of like Thrones you. purchasers and subscribers. You make this stuff happen. Thanks, so uh, Yeah, really. Let's let's do it. Let's do Shall it. Shall we? Now we'll do it. Jumping. The PSA is over. I put my diving cap on. Let's talk about Will, the most memorable of Game of Thrones characters. That's right. Who doesn't always remember old Will? I love period. His, I love his chapter. Will of no name. Uh, he's a four cost military intrigue. Our favorite icon spread. It's the best. Uh, three strength, unique ranger. He is only nice watch, so he's loyal. Very nice. Very nice. He has stealth and insight. Which is uh, which is a hold the phone level combination. Yeah, okay, wait. Bicon, great. The good ones. The good ones at that. Three good. strength, four four two command words and ranger traded. This guy's loaded, and, dude. And it's not like we're not talking like it's just the command. It's not the just the keywords. It's like insight and stealth yes, together. Yes. Is you're the going to win. Thing. You're going to draw a card. Ah, oh, it's so good. It's great. It's a very it's powerful like a card. Keyword lasagna. Makes me want to play Night's Watch if ever I did. However, however, wait, uh, the catch. <laughs> we do have a forced reaction, which always is a bit questionable. It's gonna get you the claw. After you lose an unopposed challenge, get sacrifice you. a ranger character you control. Uh -oh. All right, let me tell you why this is one of the best cards I've ever seen. Just in general, this one goes out to my boy Nate French. This one and oh, Michael Nate. Hurley. And, uh, and all the crew that, that is really in charge and of this And probably Christian uh, Peterson. Probably Christian. He came probably. down from the mountain and said, hey, Will needs and, to be good. And lo, Will needs to be good. Th this is the thing. This is what we've been talking about in first edition unboxings for our entire lives, Robert our and entire I. entire lives. We have been riding this pony <laughs> for a long time. This is a card that is perfectly amazing. It is. Perfectly strong. Perfectly usable. Balanced. Yet with a drawback that is based on in challenges. Yeah, the the fundamentals of this challenges. faction, no less. So it's like they're not only challenge space, but like the Night's Watch are supposed to be opposing everything. Always at least put some yes. noob in the way of it, everything. Yes. Just we, everything. We've got the wall. So if you're not doing that, then this guy starts to become a real problem. A liability. Until he himself is dead. Right. And you can always kill him first and mm -hmm. be like, well, this looks like this is going downhill. I don't want to lose any more yes. Rangers. All ice These will. These Greyjoys. The, the whole thing. Tell it's so perfectly balanced because if you have the Night's Watch Juju working, basically, he is incredible. He is incredible. If you don't lose an unopposed challenge, he stays on the board. Oh, my god! That helps so many things already within this faction. So, so good. It's something you already want to do. He's a heavy puncher that this faction needed. <laughs> it's incredible. For four, four gold, run him. I run him hold a, one or two. a knife like that in my mouth if I were up in a tree. Well, you need two hands to climb. He must be very uh That's all I'm saying. He's very expensive. Uh, next up, we have another... Real card. It's a real one. Can you can you read that one for the people? Yeah, I'll read one. Uh, this is called The Watch Has Need. It's a Night's Watch card. Of course, it's not loyal. It's a one-cost event. Reading action. Name a trait. Builder, ranger, or steward. Okay. Any of the three. Builder. Search the top X cards of your deck for any number of characters with that trait. Okay. Reveal them. Add them to your hand. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So you X. get what you get all of them. Yes, you get all of them all within of them. the X variable. Well, X what is, is X? your reserve value. Oh, gosh. So it's plot really dependent. Good. It's plot dependent. That's really good. It's very nice. That's really good. This is uh, this is essentially the first time I've seen these cards, by the way. I want you guys to know that. The first time. And this is a, incredibly powerful. Anything that lets you look through what arguably is going to be a lot of cards. Let's just look at the plots, spoiler alert, that are in this pack. Five, six, and eight and reserve we think, I think we established like six is average. Six is about average. So you, you look through the top six six to seven cards, yeah. and you get all of the one trait, ranger build. So this is a card, first of all. You're going to look through at least... Most of you fundamentally, life, this card stuff. is. I, I don't. I want to get away from calling cards good and bad because that's not how games work. It's very right? useful. 
this is an incredibly useful and dynamically great car. <laughs> flexible. It's flexible. It's very no, flexible. Let's just, let's just, let's just pony it's, up. Let's call it a good it's, car. It's a, very, it's a very, very quality car, and we hope that they all are. Because of its flexibility, its, its cost for what yes. it's doing for you. I mean, this is a lot of car draw potentially of right what you want at the time. It's only going to get better, though. It is only going to get as better. As we get more and more traded characters, as we get more and more things... Who knows? We might see an agenda or a uh, what do they call them in this game? Is that, they're called agendas, right? Agendas? You, the things you come in and play yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you don't steal them; you come mm-hmm. in and play with them. Uh, when we get, we may get agendas that are like you run only rangers yeah. in your deck. You run only the beyond builders. the wall agenda. Yeah, there could be crazy stuff, and then this only all of a sudden rangers. is like hitting five characters, Bam. and the game is is afoot. And it makes perfect sense because it's adding based on your reserve value, which means that the more you add to your hand, the more you have to discard down. Like it, it kind of you know it, it's it self checking. It kind of self checks itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I like. You're working within the mechanics, or an ability that is not overly crazy. It's right. balanced by the game itself. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I, I'm just, I mean... Like, oh, I love it. This is both this cards huge, already great. This is a huge win. Play Night's Watch if this you like This is a huge win. Uh, let's talk about old Maester Lewin. Maester Lewin, already the best Boy, Maester. Boy, he was just the worst. 1.0, I, that guy always coming into that start. And they do it every time at the gates. That's first right. thing, they get Lewin out, and then they search for an event, <laughs> and it drives you crazy. Especially well, that, that dark wing uh, stuff. Yes. Now I'll, Lewin is annoying in a different yeah, way. Yeah, let's look at him. He's reading, uh, no, he's not reading a book. He's pulling a scroll out there. Hey. It's like, oh, what's your... It's uh, my favorite scroll. Three-cost character. It could also be a vial of something. He sounds like Deckard Cain. Uh, Three-cost... It's he probably Pretty should. Much. Yeah, what's the roast? Decker intrigue King? and power. That's a very learned uh, icon spread there. Yeah, too standard, really. Not impressive. Uh, Maester, he's non non loyal, so you can run him in anything else, but you wouldn't because read his card. Read him. Well, you control Rob Stark and weep. He gains insight. That's well, right. you control Jon Snow. He gains stealth. Bran Stark he gains immune to opponent's plot effects, and Rickon Stark he gains pillage. Now remember, he is going to reference the thing that it's it really just nice. talked about. So. Rob is gaining the insight, John is gaining the stealth, Brain is gaining the immune to pot effects, and Rickon is gaining pillage. Rickon on pillage. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rickon, uh, well known for tearing we'll just, up the we'll countryside. We'll just throw out a bone to Rickon, because yeah. nobody Ooh. likes Rickon. Uh, all oh, right. So all the boys get something. So Rob gaining insight is critically great. John gaining stealth is critically great. And, of course, you can uh, throw him in as a non-loyal. Poor player. Arya and... Uh... And what's her name left out of yeah, this Yeah, nothing. Nothing from Lewin. That Brand other new. Stark girl who really, never really amounted to anything. So far, man. I still have a whole lot of hope for her. <laughs> Bran, uh, immune opponent's plot effects. That's okay. And Rick and Pillage, you're not going to really care about that in, in the game yet. That's right. Uh, man, he's great, right? It's fantastic. It's Why would you not run this guy? He's only three cost. It seems like a... The icons are decent. I'm sure that trade is going to become potent as the game goes on. But if you are playing uh, Stark... Or even Night's Watch, because he does affect Jon Snow. That's nice. You can splash him in a Night's Watch. I'd put one in there. Sure, I'd put not? one or may- maybe two. Especially, just especially because Jon Snow is participating. Giving him stealth is amazing. And the all-important uh, intrigue icon. That's right. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. All right, let's move it on. All right, next up. We got Lady. Yeah, Lady. Lady. Look at this art. It's beautiful. Man. Yeah, this is some of the best art we've ever I'd seen put that for on Game the of wall. Thrones, first or second edition. Anyway, this is a start card. It's a one cost attachment. It's not unique. It is unique though. Direwolf traded, but it must be attached to a Stark character only, and it's terminal. And then it reads: Attached character gets plus two strength. Already great. And okay. then finally, action: Pay one gold to attach Lady to a different character. Then, if attached character is Sansa, stand her. Limit once per phase. That's right. So that's probably that's still good. Pretty you can't like bounce Lady back and forth yes. and keep standing you, Sansa. You can pay one gold to bounce it to somebody in uh, dominance. That way you pay essentially one gold to get two strength. Worth it. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. The last second, if it's You'd like, ooh, it's right end, on the fence. Kind of at the end of the thing. Yeah, into challenges. And then challenges. Yeah, so this is Or in challenges, cool. just bounce it to a guy. This is really cool. It. Yeah. It's uh, got all lady. kinds of stuff. I'd but, put her in there. But if it's like on somebody, you can move it to Sansa. She stands after she it's did a challenge. Like a, it's kind of almost like a. It's almost like one of those weird effects, like the, the Tyrell girl. The she's like give plus three strength. Oh, Marge. You get you got Lady on the board. It's like you've got a gold in your gold pool. I can always bump a challenge by two if I need to. It's a lot of control and challenge. That's right. Very good card. A lot of interesting battle math. It's gonna keep people guessing. So next up, we have the Arbor Knight. The beautiful Arbor Knight. As you might expect. Glorious. There bestest, is. bestest art next to Lady already. It is good. He's doing a little beach riding. Beach riding. He's got uh, awesome. he's got <laughs> two gold. Uh, he's got a military and an intrigue icon. Both solid Our favorites. Icons. Some of our favorites, of course. Some one, of in that particular strength, order. Non-loyal. Uh, he's house red wine and a knight. And he has a challenges action. 
as knights often do. <laughs> Pay one gold to choose a participating House Red Wine character, which is him, himself included, and others. Until the end of the challenge, that character gets plus one strength, limit three times per phase. Uh, that's okay. So I can do this three times. It's okay. It costs me a gold. It costs me a gold for one strength. So here's here's it's not the, the best way to spend your gold. Yeah, all things equal in a perfect world. I would rather spend gold on other things. Yes. However, we yes. all know how card games work. We do. And sometimes We've seen them once. I draw into nothing but gold houses or whatever they are in <laughs> second edition. I forget what they're called. And uh, Roots. and you just you got you're sitting on four gold. And in those moments, the Arbor is a hoss. Excuse me, you should be dropping the informant if you're sitting on four gold. <laughs> it's very just, fair. Just saying. I didn't draw that either. <laughs> I'm drawing nothing but gold houses. Uh, so the Armor Knight is going to actually be a pretty cool... It's, it's a sleeper. It's a good green icon. It's going to come into play sometimes. Uh, right. It's probably in the deck for now until it gets replaced by something a little higher impact. Yes. Uh, so I think we'll see. We'll, we'll see, see how it plays. We'll see how it plays. But yeah, uh, what, what you're getting here, probably or arguably not worth two right now. But maybe later. We'll see. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, I think I think for now it's probably in the slot. But it'll eventually get... And two gold for, for a setup is great. I mean, so... We're starting to see a little bit lower curves and stuff, and uh, certain decks will want that. That's true. Certain decks will want that. Some decks want it. Oh, man, our favorite. The old party barge. <laughs> Jabba's jealous. <laughs> Let me tell you. Look how glorious party this barge. thing is. Ah, pleasure. Why don't you, why don't you read the Is R2-D2 on this one? All right, this is the pleasure barge. It's a zero-cost Tyra location, which is loyal. Have you looked deep into the art here? How, <laughs> how big that barge actually is? It's huge, and the drapery is opulent. You're as having is the a good painting. time, man. Man, that Tyrell green sail is just killing it, They're by having the way. boat parties. It, lo- it looks great, yes. They're serving up heavy whores duvers on that thing. Absolutely. N- okay, so it's the, the Pleasure Party Barge. It's a zero-cost Tyrell location. Loyal. Barge traded, naturally. Loyal. That's smart. And then Thank you. it's immune to card effects. Okay. That is critical. No shenanigans. To start off. For you or anybody else. No shenanigans. Okay, so here, once it's there, it's there. It's pretty much No there. cards can touch it once yeah. it's in play. And then reaction. After you marshal pleasure barge, if you have not yet drawn any cards in space, draw three. And then minus one gold. Minus one gold, everybody. Can you believe that? For the rest of the game. For the rest of the game. How do you feel about game. that? Remember are when you the guy, that, are you the, used the to guy or the gal that's like willing to make this willing to make this gamble? You have to make commitments to run a party of this quality. Absolutely, there are rules. There man. are rules. You have to sacrifice sometimes. There, yeah, and I'm still a, paying out for that awesome exactly. party. A good party on does the barge. not just happen. You have to plan it, and you Down have by to the make river. it expensive. A very expensive. I mean, I mean, people have got to remember the pleasure barge. If you're getting on a ship of finery with silk sails and stuff. Well, all I'm going to say is I would run this card as a three of. Whoa, it's a double-decker party barge. Right. I just noticed. Yeah. Whoa. I would run this card as a three of no in, wonder it gets in my one. deck. Tell us why, uh, Stephen. I'll tell you why. Because there's there's a uh, phrase on it that is important, and it is draw three cards. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so, but anything that say, says card draw. Say no more. Say no more. If, if you don't have cards in a card game, you lose. If you have cards, you win. It doesn't hit you the turn that you play it. Yeah. it Dude, the return on this is so huge. Let's say, let's say for instance, you're packing. Dude. Let's say you're packing twelve economy locations. Well, I am. Back. I'm packing. To even some people as high as fifteen sometimes. <gasps> if we if we eventually get enough quality econ. So let's say you're packing twelve. Packing. You've got a sixty card deck. Okay. You draw three cards. Okay. Like you have a pretty reasonable shot that one of That's those. That's already five percent. One of those cards could be an econ location or that another immediately party corrects this you problem. You could just party all the way down the river. Okay, but you've already drawn cards, so you can't you Chain can't party. play it that turn. But then you can play it next turn. That's true. I just I just think that absolutely this is a great deal. It's absolutely a great deal. I, I don't know what you guys are thinking out the, there. The only thing to be cautious is of is, is playing it too early. Because if you're sitting with minus one gold for most of the game, that's painful, actually. Yeah. So this may actually be one of those, like, I need to seal it up. I'm very close. I just need cards now. Go ahead and play this for zero. Costs you nothing immediately. But if you're like, cards, I can either man. win this turn or next turn, and it's coming down to the wire, it's like, give me cards now. Give me cards, cards now. So you can draw six real quick, 10% here, of your deck. Let me let me run something else by you, especially old Thrones Free players. Up. So what did we get in New Thrones? Second edition, we get an expanded gold curve, which means losing one gold is less significant than it would have been in the past. Right? Gold is technically cheaper than it ever has been. Ostensibly, yes. However, we're still only drawing two cards in the draw phase. That's right. So cards have inevitably kind of just become more valuable They've than they were. They've leveled up a bit. Gold is cheaper. Cards are just as expensive, which makes them, you know... 
technically more expensive than ever, which means three cards for one gold but, over even a couple of turns is an incredible deal. But I, I would foil that. Though there is an expanded gold curve, just a, just a bit, they are slapping limited on your monetary economy cards left and right. So though you might be able to get card draw cards into play, uh, the things that say reduce costs or add gold, take a look. Virtually all of them, Not with, unlimited. with just the exception of a few, have limited on them. So though you might be able to like you know quickly amass some cards, the cash to spend them aside from the beefy eight gold setup isn't always going to be there. And even looking at these plots, it's like the gold isn't. Yeah, man, but we got six far. gold plots like candy these days. We do. We got seven gold. We got reducey plots. We got the whole thing. That's true, but you got to run them. It's cheaper, and uh, and they have their yins and their yangs in their own right. They do. So so just so just study it out. You know, I think this is kind of like the boomer card. It seals the deal, but I wouldn't say this is a, a staple for Tyrell card draw. I would say that. Run Steven, three. Steven's crazy. Let's talk about <laughs> Rinley Baratheon. Uh, Rinley, Look at this guy. Rinley's a misunderstood figure in the Thrones universe, I think. And this, this is out is, of like a Da Vinci painting. Is this, this is, this is Last a, Supper beautiful, Rinley here? a beautiful Rinley. I think it's a maybe the most accurate representation having only text to go He's on. He's got his, his Jesus hands there. See that like calm. Like, I mean, it's it's much more it's a much more regal Rinley. We, I think it's overplayed. Like his ultimate role in Thrones is overplayed in his like. Kind of the, I guess, hyperbolic nature of his character being portrayed as some kind of, you know, like very loose kind of character. But like mm. he's he's still very royal here. Yes, he's put together. Regal. He knows what he's doing. He's or he's Regal. A, he's How a do you royal pronounce guy. it in, in Game of Thrones? Regal. Uh, there's, Regal. There's I don't know. There's scholars for that. Just kidding. Uh, he's a six cost tricon. Tricon, everybody. All three icons, only four strength. Mm, that it's, ability better be baller. I think it's pretty. It's pretty okay with the tricon. Lord and small council. This is a small council, Rinley. Very right. cool. Right. Uh, he's unique, of course. He's non loyal, mm. as Rinley often finds himself, and reduce the cost of the first non brathing character you marshal each this round is great. by one. I love it. It's really strong. It's flavor. very thematic. It's yes. It's very very strong flavor. Mm. Rinley doing some work here. And small council trait again. I, I love that. I can't wait until that just explodes. I don't know if this is a card that we'll see immediately obviously just like a tricon at six might feel like a gold curve slot at this point sure like oh, i'm looking for like one pretty good character i don't want to go to seven and i all the fives and fours are not quite good enough yeah. i need the icon spread i'll put her in the end uh but you know those heavy heavy ally decks where you're playing a lot of out of house guys could be a could be a boom. could be very nice we've seen a lot of baratheon decks that a lot of them go fealty but some of them are starting to look out to other houses and uh, really a nice include there, obviously. Very nice. Minus, Minus one. one. All your guys. I can't complain about that either. I can't complain about anything, Robert. It's fantastic. I like Dude, read this, read this Warhammer. All right, first off, Dude. the zaniest art we've seen. I mean, old Bobby B's looking pretty fanatical, assuming he's that cute. even is him. He looks crazy. He's very dwarfy there. Yeah, he's been he's been drinking hard. Yeah, hanging out with Gimli, borrowing some style tips, he I guess. He looks very dwarfy. So anyway, this is King Robert's Warhammer. It's a two-cost Baratheon attachment. It's not loyal. Weapon traded. Attached character gets plus one strength, so that's okay. Not really worth it yet. But let's see what else it does. Reaction after you win a challenge in which attached character is participating as an attacker. Two Use Neil up to X strength worth of characters where X is attached character strength, then sacrifice the Warhammer. Wow. That's this crazy. This is just a single, like, this may as well be a two cost event <sighs> that you have to play out early. Yes. But it is so crushing. They know it's coming. It is so crushing. All you have to do is win a challenge. Yep. And then Neil X strength worth of characters. Not X strength is, isn't how much you won by, it's the character strength. That's right. It's like Robert wins eight strength to seven, you kneel eight dudes. Eight. So you got to watch that guy when he's got the Warhammer on. I'm sorry, but like that is you just get a free turn of yeah, you, wild challenge. If, yeah, that's if a you let that go through, yeah, it's it's insane. It's insane. So whoever has the Warhammer, you got to watch him like a hawk because yeah. that could just shut you down and for an entire this, turn. If I've ever seen a melee bargaining card, yes. this is it. You throw that Warhammer good call. out, yeah, and real it's good like, call. Uh -huh. dude, I can get a big old challenge <laughs> anywhere I want to. <laughs> Who's gonna take it? Who's gonna get no? Uh, it? It's just such a good bargaining piece. So. Uh, really interesting card here. I still don't know exactly how attachments will play out, but uh, and that's that's we'll really keep an eye on. Uh, it's open ended wording, especially for me, like because it doesn't have to be the guy's characters of who you won against. No, so just you characters. just kneel anybody's characters, you know, including your own. You your own. Why not? I'm glad we both realized that we can kneel our own characters because mm -hmm. we're good at this game. Think about it. Sometimes you wanna. All right, next up we have. The Hound. The Hound! Now we've talked about The Hound, Robert. You've talked about The Hound. You wrote the, uh, wrote the article there about I, him. I wrote something about him. He's phenomenal. He, he is really good. Uh, why don't you read him? You're okay. the Hound expert around uh, here. All right. So he's a three-cost bicon military power, six strengths, so already a great deal. Whoa. House Clegane, unique. 
Not loyal either, so prime. Say no more. My prime heart. Prime splash candidate. Anyway, of course I'd run him. Ambush four, still worth it. Incredible. If, if not more. Well, why wouldn't I? But then the catch. Forced reaction. Uh-oh. After you win a challenge in which the hound is participating, you may discard one card at random from your hand if you do not return to your hand. So you got to discard or else he bounces. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like basically you suffer a little one claim intrigue challenge to keep him on the board That's after, right. after he wins something. Worth it because he likes to drink. That's probably worth it. Like, it's it's nice. It's nice, man, because you don't have to. You the can cost just, benefit here is just worth it. You can just return him to your hand. He's so threatening, That's you can fine. return him to your hand. That's fine. You should have the gold with Lannister anyway, assuming you're playing him in house. So, yeah, this is well worth this it. This guy's great. This guy's great. I, I think he. Hard to say anything he, bad about him. I think, you know, Toad's honestly, I, I think that the hound starts to kind of show off what Lannister's going to be up to in this. Yeah, a lot edition. of ambush. Like, more ambush than I was ever really prepared for. And just a lot of, like,. Just I can just pay to win challenges, and then maybe I suffer the consequences, or I just put him back in my hand to do mm-hmm, it again. Mm-hmm. It's just really strong. So I, I like this out of Lancer. It yeah, seems totally. Very, very good. Uh, you're probably going to run at least one hound. Yeah, at least. Probably one, because I don't think I'd want to, because you don't really want to dupe him up, because he could be bouncing. Yeah, he's so. a bouncer. Although I guess... I guess you could probably sack the dupe to prevent that. I don't. I haven't looked at the the new rules hard enough to know. But yeah, you probably could that's usually the, the case. You should totally sack the dupe. I'm also see. I'm also see. I, I have this old old turns mentality where it's like, well, if the cost is I have to discard a card from my hand, can I choose that option if I have zero cards in hand? But the the wording this time kind of gets around it. It yes. says if you do not discard a card from your hand, you got to bounce them. They're so learning. I think it's pretty obvious. Yes. The intent. You got. Of the card you got to have it. Next up is Steven's favorite oh, card in the game. He is he loves Robert. This Robert thing. and I are we, so we argue on about different this pages one. about this one. We we uh, I th- I, we're not on different to, pages. I'm just on had to go out to ice cream the bottom part of the page. Bond. Steven's at the top part. Yeah, yeah. I think on this one initiative, you may as well just you may as well be blank. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> one initiative is nothing. It's, I've run. I used to run captured cogs. I get plus initiative. It's like whatever initiative doesn't matter. That's true. Anyway, it's a one cost location. It's unique. It is loyal. Loyal. That's how you know it's great, by the way. <laughs> it's a vehicle, and it says reaction after you have become the first player. Or That's weird. It's like past perfect participle after there. After you. After you have become. After you. After Actually, you it just become, says you become. Yeah. After you become the first yes, player. Uh-huh. That was my mistake, not yours, FFG. Let's make it overly wordy. Uh, either do one of these things. Gain one gold or draw a card. Minus one initiative. Okay. All right, a couple of things. Just, so, let's just lay the foundation. Let's just, let's just lay let, the foundation. Let's set the stage for the debate that continues. Okay, the first thing, <laughs> when you first look at this card, sometimes it's not obvious that I need to win initiative to get this benefit. That is not the case, necessarily. Correct. If your opponent wins initiative and makes you the first player, mm-hmm. then you get to uh, activate this card. That's so, right. already, even if you lose initiative the whole game, it may well be that you're playing against Barra Fealty, and they really want to go second with all of their Neil cards. That's true. So they're like, hmm. It's a good probability these days. I now have to choose. Am I going to give my opponent a card? Because it's going to be a card. Like, it's going to be a card time. every time. Uh, or am I going to get to go second and have a little marshalling phase advantage? Now, mm. depending on the type of player that you are, I'm the type of player that generally just likes to go second all of the time. Because I want to see all of your stuff first. And then be like, okay, he's got 20 strength in military, 13 strength in intrigue, and 12 in power. What do I have in my hand that can match or exceed that so that I don't overextend or underextend myself? It's true. I like playing games like that. However, there is a benefit to going first. That is, <laughs> claim is applied before your opponent gets to attack. Correct. So you land that critical military challenge with a put to the sword, and all of a sudden you have no challenges you can do. So like, it's perfectly balanced, really, between going first and second, depending on the deck and the situation and the player. That's correct. So the real question is... What's it worth to you? What's it worth to you? And, and all that I'm saying is that this is yet another <laughs> card that says simply on it, draw one card. And, and you have to, or go. You have to respect flexible. that in Game That's of nice. Thrones. You ha- in any card game, you have to respect any card that says draw a card for only one gold. I, so com- you compare... And car- cards are worth more than... Because like in, in 1.0, we kind of... You know, mathed it out and determined that a card is worth like one and a half gold. It's like one and a, it looked like one and a half gold. So now a card's probably worth with the gold curve and things, maybe two ish. Yeah, yeah, two ish. About two. Now, this is another weird effect that gets you gold in the plot phase as well. Which is true. So Before all sorts of weird event shenanigans can happen from mm-hmm. this. Obviously, if you want to build a Lannister deck that is trying to win initiative, I think you could do it with the minus one not being a big deal, especially right now. Yeah, as totally. like it's very static what plots you can expect to see. Uh, so, like, I, I think there's a ton of benefit here and not a lot of problems. You to see. However, 
Call Robert, what is, your, uh, so, what is your hindrance, your reluctance? My, only, my main foil is, and, and you have said things like this in the past, just saying, uh, is that it is... <laughs> Roll the tape! <laughs> it is, like, we got a clip for this. Roll the clip. Um, Stephen has said that, you know, he doesn't necessarily like things that are conditional. I do not like things that are conditional. And, and this does give you minus one initiative, so you will automatically be winning initiative less frequently. So the choice is yours less often. And I also feel that because Lannister, at least for now, um, is still highly intrigue heavy, they want to go first These because they can get those intrigue challenges off first, get those cards out of hand before they play their versions of Die by the Sword and all these kinds of things. So um, Good points. Good I, points. I think at least for now, this is a sleeper. I don't think it's bad. I think it's okay. I think it has its time and its place. I don't necessarily think that's now. Steven would be running... So how many do you run in the Lannister deck right now? Of this? Yeah. Uh, I would run one, two at the most. I, w- I would say two right now if I had a Lannister deck. In any deck. Absolutely. In any <laughs> 100%. Lannister deck, in any Lannister deck. 100%. I don't, like, all that you're looking at is maybe you wasted a gold and got minus one initiative to always be the second player, which to me, yeah, I'm, I would be willing to There are that. decks that want to do that, and being second with the amount of ambush that they have isn't a bad deal either. It isn't a bad deal. Okay. You can hold on to your goal and kind of see what's going on. So, so I, I just think this is a mixed bag. That's fair. Mixed I'll bag. agree to that. We'll compromise. We compromise. I'll agree to that. I just like it a little more. <laughs> he likes it a little more. Let's talk about a you card, want a card that, you can really like. Let's talk like. about a card that everybody Holy should smokes. love. Why don't just you want to read hold this the one? phone on this one. Don't even... Ooh. Just don't even... Hold on. How about I read it and you just give us facial expressions... That okay. sum up how you feel about All this right. card as we go. So this is a Greyjoy loyal, unique location costing one gold. It's called the Seastone Chair. Iron Islands traded. And then reading. Interrupt. When claim is applied for an unopposed military challenge in which you are the attacking player, okay. mew your faction card to choose a character without attachments. And then, uh, controlled by the losing opponent, instead of the normal claim effects, kill that character. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> what? What? This costs one, everybody. I'm sorry. This costs I'm sorry. one. This is insanity. Unbelievable. This, this card is complete insanity. It's, it's already in the Greyjoy wheelhouse with winning an unopposed challenge. Just do it on are military. You, s- you get targeted are you claim. Are you serious? Targeted claim. No. This you don't is get to crazy. Choose. It's that guy. That guy right there. Hold on. Um, this is absolutely crazy. So it's actually a character. The only thing that sucks about it is that it won't benefit you proportionately on higher claim plots. No, it will not. No, it will not. That's and the that's only the compromise. Trick. That's the trick. However, however, you don't have to trigger an interrupt. You don't have to. If you don't Correct. want to, it's not forced. So you can choose to use this or not. Guys, how many times? How many times are you playing a game? Listen, this is the nature of Thrones. Entry challenges you always feel good about. Yes. Power challenges you always feel good about. <laughs> Military challenges, by the time that the board has gotten to a state where you've got gardeners and caretakers and just random, you, you know, winches. You didn't declare this awesome military challenge to have a, a caretaker die. It's just like, oh, my one cost guy is gone now. Like, what did, I really, what did I really accomplish? Nothing. But this makes every military challenge so incredibly important that I and can dangerous. basically get a put to the sword on every single challenge. Imagine the value in this. Yes. Always oppose Greyjoy is the name of the game. Oh, it's so you, good. You, and have, then you, you have you to add in Greyjoy. stealth. You add in, if you're splashing Martell like I am, you add in the uh, confinement and stuff. And it's like, there's no way you're not Get getting out of here. Yeah, it's, this is a phenomenal card, especially for its cost. Be excited about this one. Be afraid when it hits the this table This is incredible. Well. Guys, this literally just skyrocketed Greyjoy to the next. I would put two to three of these right now in my deck. I think that's Probably right. two. Probably two, because mm-hmm. I'm conservative. All right, moving on. What do we got? We got. Uh, what do we got? We got the Merchant Prince. The Merchant. Hey. The Merchant Prince. <laughs> How does that work? Hello. So he, he's. I'm a merchant. I'm a merchant prince. I'm stronger than the knight. I have I have a hereditary <laughs> title, but not enough money as I would like, so I have to get into business. Ah uh, man, well right. I'll, I'll buying read him and up. selling. He's got a he's a three cost. He's kind of expensive for a one icon, which he has intrigue character, a three strength. <laughs> one icon. I get it. Uh, but a very <laughs> oh, a very good uh, very good icon to have. If you're gonna have one. He's a companion. E Y E. I'm glad we're bringing back traits that probably aren't ever gonna matter. <laughs> I'm a companion. He's Wait, a companion. Why is a merchant prince a companion? <laughs> Gosh! You hired him. This guy is into Hello. everything. Because if, if you're if you're into Firefly at all, this just makes no sense anymore. <laughs> oh, that's what he's doing right now. I'm a companion. Uh, while Merchant Prince has an attachment, he gets plus one strength and gains a military icon, which is great. So if, you attach something to him, and he becomes like his vicious a, warrior. A bicon for four. 
But, I mean, that, that's pretty good. Well, let's see if the companion trait does anything special. It won't, Robert. As it is, as it is it's kind of lackluster, IMO. All right, at first, the magisters and archons and merchant princes were pleased to welcome the last Targaryens to their homes and tables. At first. At first. At first. But then they met Danny. Then they met Danny, and it's like, oh, I didn't realize <laughs> she would be so boring. Ah, uh, Merchant Prince, this is okay. Burn Ward, call him up. This is pretty okay, just actually. Targ's been okay. actually needing just kind of more static, non danny reliant cards. So. And, if, and if they were anything like they were in first edition, they'll have attachments up and down the yin-yang. Yeah. So, that's nice. Up and down the yin-yang. There is no up and down in the yin-yang, technically. It's a, that's, a, that's a river in Essos, by the way. It's a single... A lot of travel uh, one way It's a single the entity. There are no stoppings and startings. That's right. Next up, we have Vais Dothrak. Horse Arch. Horse Arch. That's what that actually translates into. That's awesome. I had no idea. Well, very literal title here. It's a one-cost Targaryen location that is loyal. Essos traded. And then reaction. After you reveal a plot card, discard an attachment from your hand to choose an attachment with equal or lower printed cost and discard it from place. So, let me tell you why this is good. You know why it's good. This one. Yeah, go ahead. You know why it's good? I this already know one. it's good. Yeah, this one. <laughs> this one and this one. This one, this one. <laughs> uh, this is really good because here's how Targaryen is losing right now, and that is Danny gets all covered up. Basically, in Milk of the Poppy. I hope you like Poppy. Whatever else it is. Uh, all sorts of stuff just to basically try to keep this powerhouse character from Pop- expressing herself. Poppies will make you sleep. And Targaryen actually is running a lot of things like Seal of the Hand and stuff that benefits Danny and the big characters. And so you're able to discard one of those as a utility play to get rid of Milk of the Poppy or things like that that are hurting you. Yes. I think it's just good to, to keep your characters healthy. And it uh, fits right into the Targaryen theme. So you probably run one right now. Yeah, probably run, run one. One of these. I think that's fair. Totally and fair. Fair and accurate. I think it's fair, too. It's a great deal. Uh, let's talk about the old bastard daughter. Aww. Can we say that on TV? We are now. We did it. We're done. They're saying everything on TV. Yeah. Censor us later. I've seen uh, How to Get Away with Murder. You guys watch that show? Yeah. Yes. It's, 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 They're it's, doing, some, it's something else. They're doing it, man. Watch that and some Bake Off. You'll uh, thank us later. Bastard Daughter is a two-cost character, military icon, one strength. Bastard to Sand Snake, non-loyal. Not a big deal. Say no more. A lot of, uh, what, man, she only gets one icon for two. I know, it seems it weird. Make, it makes the old Arbor Knight look like a total steal. Well, when her or the Red Viper is killed, this card one card at random from each opponent's hand. Total melee card. It's This card is alright, guys, but like I maybe I need to get into Martell frame of mind. Yes. I just think, like, the Red Viper is the last thing you're going to kill. Mm-hmm. So this is not really going to happen. You're going to kill this before the Red Viper, like, sure. mostly every time. And, uh, I don't know. It, do you and play? Do you pay two gold, essentially, for a little... For a, a weenie You basically icon, weenie icon. military block with this girl, and then you kill her, and you basically get a card out of their yes. hand. It's, uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay, but I just don't see this one lasting very long. The, I think the real... Um, uh, hiccup for her is that this is a card slot yeah. more than anything. It's, it's a card like slot. it's not a terribly impressive card uh, to start. Again, we have such a small library. Yeah, it's hard to not put her in, but she later it's going to be hard to keep her. She is hand snake traded as well. Yeah, we'll see if that builds. And maybe there's some noting, weird. And bastard. it says killed. If it was like whenever discard they got play. discard and yeah. lose play, I think there's some bouncing stuff you could do. But Totes. right now, yeah, just a little bit underwhelmed. Very true. Very yeah, true. It's not a problem. It's just a reality. It's not a problem. Yeah, we're just. We're just Sound it like it is. You can't, uh, not yeah. every firework can be perfect, you know? That's right. Let's talk about support of, that's a weird, weird analogy. Support of the people is a one cost event. Now, I, I gotta talk about this one because I love it. It's his favorite. I think this may be one of the better events in the game so far. Ooh. A one cost event, support of the really? people, looks great. Just get us into that just frame of mind of what is it to be in that medieval kind of Westeros yes. setting. Uh, reaction after you win a power challenge by five or more strength. Search your deck for a location with printed cost three or lower. It's fun art. And here's the key. Put it into play. Boom. Shuffle your deck. What's not to like? This card Search is, your deck? This card is incredible. This card is incredible. Let me tell you, folks. I love this card. We have seen plenty of potent effects. I love this Pl- card. Not effects. Locations. And if you can both search and get a high cost location into play for one. See, for one. All you have to do is win a power challenge by five or more. That is a great, it, great condition this, this for is the why power it, of this it, It's so good to me because so you can threaten a power challenge that a lot of times isn't mattering as much because there's no power in the game yet well, he's or got your opponent the doesn't people. have power. But now you have to honor it. Support of the people and one gold. Oh my gosh, does he have it? Does he not have it? And all of those incredible locations Yes, from the core right set. Right out of the core box. Two yeah. cost and three cost. The only exception being the wall, which is a big old fatty. It's at four cost. Is it at four? Okay. Yeah. But like, it's... Aside from that, like you're looking at all of, like the Greyjoy big ship that gives Balin stuff, the Lannister and all the, entry all the locations, Highgarden, the, you the name Tyrell it. stuff. Yes. It's like, man, all this stuff is so good. Mm-hmm. So, 
I like one or two of these in a deck right now. Like I think you're right. I think it's really important. It will only get better. It's basically like a weird little House of Dreams style deck. Yeah, one or you two can, for sure. You can start to base a deck around a location a lot more easily. Yes. Because yes. you can pr- consistently get it. And, and some of them are just, they're worth, you t- worth your time anyway, and they advance your win condition that much faster. So it's like you can potentially run fewer. Run three of these and one fewer copy of those choice locations. Absolutely. That you need. And, and I'd even think, awesome. man, if you need it, like, go get a, go get a gold road. Yeah, totally. Totally. Like, I, just I need, need econ right now. A little bit more juice or that king's road. Yeah. It's like, phew. yeah, go do it. Bounce All right, support of the people. There you have it, guys. All right, moving on next to. Street of the Sisters, of not Street the of sisters. sisters anymore, but Street of the Sisters. Street of the Sisters. Why don't, why don't you look at this? I'm going to look at this while you read it, and I'm going right. to see if I can just go there. Street of the Sisters, a one-cost unique neutral location, King's Landing, traded reading, reaction, after you win a power challenge again by five or more strength, really leveraging that, kneel your faction card to gain one power for your faction. Oh, uh, it's so cool. Why wouldn't you? It's so cool. I mean, like, uh. I don't know. I, I think there's... There's only a few decks that really are going to have a slot for this card. Sure. It's, it's one of those weird, like, yeah, I think it's good, but, like, this is just Rush deck. Yes. 100%. All I see this in, like, it. a Greyjoy unopposed kind of Rush, anything with a lot of renown. It could be the thing that just pushes you over the edge a couple extra power over the course of the game. Yep. Even early. Uh, so I, th- I think this has some potential. I Eventually, it will probably fade out, kind of like those superior claim strategies. Nah, uh, sure. Inevitably kind of yield to a more, like, holistic approach to decks. But What's not holistic about power challenges? I, you know, you're It's you're the true. win condition, after all. It is the win condition, but it's also <laughs> like controlling board state and hand state is pretty important up front, too. Right. You know, right. It's important. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. And it's again, fine. power doesn't matter until you have 15 of them. That's right, man. So they say. I say that until I die. Till you die. I still might say it. Woo! The on. ghost of Steven has come back to the store to tell us that Don't forget power about your 15 power. Our only temporary really good. You have to read this one. Rise of the Kraken! Ah, oh, man, it's so good. This is an old plot from First a Edition, if you guys didn't know. A true know. classic. Uh, really classic. It's 282, which Love is it. about where it was in the original as well. It's that art is great, too. War traded. It's a loyal. It has a reserve of five, mm. which I think is quite generous for this kind of an effect. Yeah, I would agree. Interrupt when you gain You're power. You're saying the for, reserve is generous? Yeah, I think yeah, it could have yeah. been like four or three, mm-hmm. even, uh, just to signify what this plot was all about. Limit one, though. When you gain power for winning an unopposed challenge... Gain two power instead. So basically, you double up your unopposed bonus. You win three unopposed challenges. You get six power, plus a power challenge at two claim. You Always eight power. those great joys. Who Let knows what you. else could happen? You throw you. in the street of sisters. You get nine the chair. power. You throw in the chair. Now you're killing somebody. There's no telling what's going on. Watch so out. This is a really strong one. They're and, up to uh, no good. Now I will say, having run this a lot in first edition and kind of looking at it in second. Sometimes you find it hard to include it in your plot deck. Now, Ooh. probably not for now. It'll be pretty easy right now. Don't but say that. You know, you're going into the, it's like you're going to the fifth inning. You're going into the fifth <laughs> plot phase. Bottom of the fifth. All you need is like a good five to six gold to kind of try to solidify your board. The game is super close. You can't. You just usually can't drop a two gold plot. Yes. You, you, your opponent drops four this or five This is a dealer characters. sealer, right? So this, this is, is kind of the... Okay, here's where this plot fits in for me. Here it comes. This is where your deck is built to hit the game at about third turn. Okay. And there are decks to do. This is a proper rush deck in Thrones. We'll hit second or third turn. And you're basically on top of the game. You're winning. You're destroying. However, a dedicated control deck will be able to gain control in the next turn or two. Barathe, By bouncing your stuff with Gaston Gray, having a better economy package, like all those kinds of things start to spiral, and you start winning. You, the steamroller starts slowing down. This is your, I'm going to win right now, because if I don't, I'm, I'm going to lose slowly doing it over the Irregardless next of what you have to say. Irregardless, Which right. is a word. <laughs> I swear. Uh, but this is incredible. Great joke, players. You guys love this. We'll all play around with it and have a good time. But it's loyal. It's loyal. It's only great joys. Great joys only. <laughs> Nobody else would want to run it. Uh, is that true? Every, I think most, most I would. people would probably would enjoy it. it. All right, tell next me about up. The, I'll tell you about the long plan. Oh, man, I got these all out of order. This is a four gold, three initiative, one claim. So this is like the gold standard for Thrones. Long plan It's a loyal Martell plot is a scheme. They're schemers. They're, they are schemers. They're Graspers. schemers. Graspers. Graspers. Uh, you do not return unspent gold to the treasury during the taxation phase. That ability is cool. I like it. Whatever. As however, oh. however, we had this in first edition, but they've added goodness to it. Reaction after you lose a challenge, gain one gold. Limit one per deck. Love it. Love this it. Reserve of great. eight. 
Absolutely great. Uh, this is the kind of theme that I'm looking for in, in plots. It's fantastic. Right? It's like, oh, well, I'll lose three. I'll come back with yes. at least three gold yes. at the start of the next turn. I've got all my cards from the last turn because I've got eight reserve. And now I'm going to take it over this turn. I'm basically biding my time. Just like, right. I'll lose some challenges. It's fine. It's okay. And then next turn, I'm just going to turn the jets yeah, on. This is all part of the plan. It's killer. It's all the part of the plan. plan. Yeah, as it were. Doran's got a plan. Doran's got a plan. You don't catch him with and his plan. And they play a lot of chess, it seems. Oh, yeah. Or uh, what do they call it in this, in this world? High Life. No, there's a name for it. The, the game. The game. Savas. Thank Savas. you, Savas. The game of. Whisper. We got the King of Whispers back there Whispers. letting us know. Shh, shh. I'm reading this one because this is my favorite plot Please of the do. pack. Uh, this is Mustard the Realm. It's a four five one six. All right, so pretty nice across the board. And yeah, then it's, a, it's an edict traded plot. And then edict reading traded. during a challenge in which you control an army and attacking army character. Oh my gosh! Guys. Raise the claim on Mustard the Realm by one. I absolutely love this. Love it. Oh I my love it. goodness! Everything that we're seeing is so correct. It's yes. crazy. Like just from this a, is way better than the Mustard the just, Realm that we had in one point. Down the line, way better. The design. That's going into these cards yes. is so ambitiously hopeful for me. Like they have been nailing it so far. They really Absolutely have. Absolutely nailing it. Thanks, Hats man. off to this. Also, hey, I've been, I've been. I, this is not this the is appropriate time to start talking about this, but I gotta, you guys, I gotta ask you guys a question out there on camera. This has nothing to do with Thrones. I've been wondering. <laughs> this I, is the time to ask. This it has is the nothing time to do with Thrones because I, I am. But now's uh, the time. I'm looking to muster the realm with our fans to or talk muster to our fans here. The realm. So here's the thing. All, all over YouTube, you you've like seen comments. it. You've seen what the people are doing, right? It's like it's those YouTube quick cuts. posting videos. No, where it's like, hey, I'm talking, and then it's like, now I'm talking over here, and I'm talking. Oh yeah, over the here. snap edits. And it's like I, it's obviously one person with a camera, yeah. and they cut it, cut it, cut it. And Every it's sentence like, is its own little. And hello, mini it's clip. my own sentence. Yeah, and this card is cool. And here I am over here with the Martells, and it's like that drives me crazy. Eating I, cereal, eating I a burrito. Not, I could not hate that talking more. About cards. But maybe we're out of touch. I, we're getting older. We're getting older. We're, we're, we don't know anything anymore. We're so no longer hip and with it. I, I genuinely want to know, like in the comments section or, or however you want to express yourself you to us. you guys like that stuff? Just, do you, do you like the jump cuts or not? Just tell me if you like them. If everyone's like, dude, they're yeah. the best thing that's ever happened to videos... I'm willing to play ball. We can we could do some good jump cuts. We could do the whole thing rather than doing it, like the static. It helps static me shot. Uh, cope with my ADD. It it makes things a lot easier for sure. We don't have to try anymore. It's like oh, he's saying a new thing, and okay. I can visually cut. punctuate. And that. then it's like oh, I didn't like that. I'll cut that and go to this thing. As and well it's as like grammatically, everyone's ready for it. And it's like a little faster than you want it to be. It's just like yeah, it's high energy. It's, it's like, high energy. I just I didn't sign up for that. Thanks, Donald. Uh, anyway, let us know. Must of the realm. So, what do you think about this? I I, I love this. I love it. Why uh, wouldn't she love it? It's got nice stats. It has a very powerful effect. And as soon as we start seeing armies of yeah. like a nice spread of icons, it's going to be a go-to. That's for what I'm people. saying. I don't think we have the armies really to support this yet. Correct. Maybe a couple of factions. Do you like those great or like drowned guys? Right. I think they're armies, and they get pluses for the warships. You want to talk about some devotion-based combat? That's real good. Uh, but my this, God compels me to fight. This finally makes those kinds of characters awesome. worth your time. It does, and you can put two in the decks. So you can run this awesome army deck. We're We've starting got some to get support armies. for different themes. We've got some armies because some of us when we play Thrones, myself included, I don't care about Rob Stark. I don't care about the Greyjoys. I don't care about Sansa. I just want the big armies. Yes. Okay. That's true. That's true. The only character worth caring about is like Tywin. Okay. The rest is immaterial. Let's get done with this thing. Let's last card then. It's the last card. Here to serve. Here to serve. Yes, me lord. It's called At the Gates. That's what we call this one. Uh, I'll read it even. Read it. First of all, we have some very cool art. Yes. Very, very cool art. Just, it looks, what is it? It's almost like claymation. We're setting that leg. Set it up. Set it up. Uh, this is obviously a maester, and he's obviously here to serve. He's a three gold, three initiative, one claim plot. Mm -hmm. It's a conclave plot and a kingdom plot. So this Great. is a maester kind of Good traits. Uh, vibe. When revealed, search your deck for a maester character with printed cost three or lower. Put it into play. Shelf your deck. Amazing. It's, it's a great plot. It will be forever. Amazing. Forever and always. Forever and always. Amazing. Nice. Just, just throw it out. Nice watch. Nice watch. Especially <laughs> loves this. Uh, because they can get their little claim soaker guy. I did this with Greyjoy all the time in first edition. We all did it. You get your little claim soaker, and it's like, oh, one claim for the rest of the game. And then matter. here's Windermere saving people for the rest of the yeah, game. It was such a bummer. Now Windy's just a stealther, so yes, he's okay. The captain and captain of pasty. But skin. you get three gold, and if you put a three cost maester, and it's basically a six gold plot with a search effect, with a card play effect. The value there, it's unbelievable. Shut the front door. Shut That's all we're saying. The door. All right, guys, there you have it. This is the Game of Thrones taking the black. first chapter pack, Taking the Black. This is a, a really big step for this game. Let's get into this thing, man. It's happening. All the cards are just coming out. 
and we're, we're it's seeing very it. exciting. We Robert it's and I crazy. generally we look we look at it for kind of behind the curtain a little bit. It's like, well, what are the designers thinking here? Peaking. What? How are we using the mechanics to balance cards or to like change sure. cards or evaluations? That's right. This is just so spot on. Uh, from everything that we can tell, this is so spot on. You know, with our eyes. And I think this is going to be a really fun journey through the Game of Thrones second edition. Yes, yeah, so a great way to start off the the first cycle of this game. Absolutely. Game now keep in mind, uh, all of this happens because of purchases from our store and subscribers and tokens and all that. So it's true. Uh, head on over to the store and grab some stuff if you like these uh, videos. And if you've already done that, then these are for you. So thank you so much. And we got so much more coming, guys. Stay tuned and uh, take care out there. Peace.